It'll be one to go this time, bye. Coming to the green, buddy, coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, 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 take, 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 go, 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 go. Get some motor running. Head out on the highway. Uh, Dale, talk about uh, maybe the importance of being uh, up top there in a, in a good starting position for Sunday. Well, that's going to be kind of good for us if we can maintain the track position all day. That's really going to be the key, just trying to maintain it. But it gives us a good opportunity <clears throat> so we don't have to really try certain st strategies like we have in the past to get there. So uh, we can really kind of go off of whatever strategy we want and we feel like it's best for us and we don't have to make any sacrifices anywhere during the race, uh, you know, unless we lose that track position we have to gain it back somewhere or another. Raise your hand if you have a question for Dale Earnhardt Jr. We'll bring you the wireless. We've got one over here and then one here. Yeah, Dale, um, you were out there just a few minutes ago in the uh, Nationwide Series practice, and of course you're taking the car uh, this weekend that Mr. Fellows took the victory last weekend in uh, Montreal. So uh, I saw you two conversing during the practice session. So I guess you're kind of working with Ron. Yeah, um, Ron drive, drove our car last week, and uh, <clears throat> he's a good guy. I've known him for a long time. He's a hard act to follow, but uh, so I got my work cut out for me, but. You know, we uh, we became friends back in uh, 99 when he was racing in the Bush Series periodically and uh, had a lot of respect for him. I went to uh, several of, several people like Ron to get help, and uh, we uh, got to work together again with Corvette in 2001. He was a teammate of mine <clears throat> when I drove with my father and Andy Pilgrim and Ke uh, Kelly Collins. Ron was driving the other car. I followed Ron's career, uh, not so much in the Cup, not just in the Cup, but in the Corvette. And he was another teammate of mine when we drove the Corvette again in Infineon. And uh, he's always been uh, glad to help, you know. There's people that will help you. There's, other, there's a difference in the guy that will help you, and there's a difference in the guy that's just glad to help you. And he's one of those guys. He's happy to... Lend a hand however you can, because I guess, you know, he just likes to help people, see them do good. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, he uh, he's still a far superior road racer than, than a lot of the cup guys in the sport that, that are regulars. And uh, it's good to be able to hang out with him once or twice a year throughout the season. And it was a lot of fun to race with him last week and help him get a win. He helped us get a win, too. You know, it was very beneficial to my whole team while we're trying to search down some sponsorship money for next year and things like that. And then we had a new crew chief with that team. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully we can keep it rolling. Question here. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Dave Robin from NASCAR.com. Dale, could you talk a little bit more about what you learned from Ron Fellows and then the way you outran him here in your second Bush Championship season in 99 and then did, did that win for your team last week you know did that kind of close the circle if you will yeah I don't know how I did that or how that happened um, I would just remember most of the day being t running off his running about two car lengths behind him for about 20 laps and then I'd run the next 20 laps about four car lengths behind him and then the next 20 laps would be about six car lengths and that was if I was lucky um, and at some point near the end of the race his uh, his car started losing some uh, power and my car was jumping out of gear so he was running around with about 10 and 20 less horsepower and I was running around with one hand on the shifter holding it in third and fourth and whatnot, but it was a lot of fun. And I, you know, he just come out of he come out of one and stumbled, and we got on the inside of him. His motor stumbled, and we got on the inside of him. Maybe we get by him through there. And it was a big, big moment for me because road racing is really, really a challenge for me. And uh, I, you know, when I first came into the sport, I really applied myself to learning what I could about road racing and I felt like I was getting better 
uh, at it, but uh, you know we only run it twice a year, and I don't know. You know, it's just I've I've had some pretty good cars over the last eight years, but more recently we struggled a little bit. So, uh, but anyway, that was a big that was a big win for me. It was a long, long, long time ago, but it still meant a lot to me because I know how good Ron is. Question over here. Go ahead. Jim, can you talk about Martin Truex finally getting his deal done and what that means to your father's company as far as them moving forward? Yeah, I was happy for uh, I was happy for Martin and Dee. I guess Martin another year to see what because he can see what the landscape's like next year and uh, see if there. I guess you know what he what he did was take the best opportunity and that was staying where he was at and maybe next year he'll have a better opportunity um, somewhere else or maybe it'll still be where he's at so uh, you know he I didn't get in the middle of it I, I uh, didn't talk to Martin didn't talk to anyone uh, Max or anybody but um, I'm glad that they chose to do what they did I think it's good for both of them um, Martin's got a pretty good relationship with his team and he still you know he remains a premier driver for that for that that whole company and uh, you know, I think that when there were some changes made this off season or this silly season, uh, that but there weren't a lot of domino effect to it, you know. So they really didn't open a whole lot of holes that would be interesting for anyone. So I think Martin made a wise decision to maybe wait it out another year. Question right here, Jeff Gluck from NASCAR Scene Junior. Um, you mentioned the sports car thing, and when you're running Corvettes, were you? Back when you were doing that, were, were you doing that with a focus on improving your road racing or just kind of like a fun thing to do? And do you think that you ever see yourself getting back in another sports car? Did the incident at Infineon kind of take away your taste for that, I guess? <clears throat> well, driving the Corvette, the Corvette was the best car I've ever drove. And uh, it was the funnest car that I ever drove. I'd love to drive it again. Um, <clears throat> I felt pretty, I felt responsible for destroying that car. Uh, even though we had some issues with the fuel system that had a direct effect on the fire and <clears throat> all that happening, but I was driving a race car. If I don't hit the fence, we don't, you know, we don't have the problem. But <clears throat> it was, uh, you know, when I I went and drove the Crawford and and that was fun. You're running into 24 hour of Daytona is a lot of responsibility. You go in early thinking thinking of it being a novelty and <clears throat> and it's uh, you know it's a neat little quest or whatever you want to call it. But once you get there and you start racing and you see the seriousness of the situation, it really becomes pretty heavy and pretty evident and 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 more so uh, a real chore of an event. You know, very taxing on everybody and and heartbreaking for pr pretty much everyone but the winner so uh there <clears throat> the f before the day tony 500 even starts you know it takes a lot out of you we me and tony and uh mr wallace were an hour and 20 minutes from winning we had a two lap lead when the wheel fell off and that was devastating you know so uh that was pretty devastating, but because I really wanted to, you know, I really saw, it's kind of like, you know, when my father lost the Daytona 500 in 90, you know, this last minute deal, I don't know, it was very, it was similar devastation to me, personally, but, because uh, I really wanted to, a mental picture of me standing on that podium with them other guys with the trophy, because we'd run second in our class with the Corvette in 01. And Ron and those guys got to celebrate the win, you know. But uh, we were pretty jealous, to be honest. But um, <clears throat> I don't know. Sports car ra sports car racing is a lot of fun. But what happened was the Cup side got to be uh, more of a uh, more uh, demanding on my schedule and asked for more focus and devotion to it. For me to maintain what I feel like is uh, my, you know, be competitive like I want. I really kind of had to shut off a couple things.